So this kind of confirms that it is the damper. steering damper. Almost half the weight. Snobless bleeding valve. We're using the Brembo HTC 64T. Beautiful. That is carbon. With the most current rim tuning ECU flash. Well, hey everybody, it's your good buddy 650 Eve here and welcome to a very special episode of the new bike build series. This time, I'm coming to you from beautiful, sunny and warm Miami, Florida. And today, our good buddy Miami Manny is gonna install some amazing parts onto our 2020 BMW S1000 RR, the gorgeous Hockenheim Silver. And we are very close to the random drawing for this motorcycle where one person will get to choose between that Hockenheim Silver S1000 RR or our 2019 Aprilia RSV4 1100 factory. Information on how that lucky person could be you down below in the description. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, tap that bell and you'll get notified when new content is uploaded. We got three amazing motorcycles here at the Moto Million Villa and they look very, very nice. But today we're gonna to be working on this beautiful, beautiful machine. And you gotta excuse us if you hear a little airplane noise because we are very close to the Miami airport, but let's bring up Miami Manny and see what we're gonna to do today. Well, good morning. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of things today, actually. We're going to be, one thing that we really wanted to do for a long time was the Brembo calipers. Yes. This bike really deserves Brembo calipers. To get rid of the haze calipers. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's been very controversial too on this bike. Yes. We won't get into that right now. Going to change the clip-ons while we're there. Oh, okay. Going to change the master cylinder. Okay. And I think we have a surprise to change on the bike as well. Oh. Um, I think, haven't figured it out yet, the... The stock steering damper is leaking on the bike. Okay. And if that's the case, we're going to upgrade it to an Olin's unit. Yes. We're going to also match the clutch lever to our Brembo RCS master cylinder. Okay. And a small little touch that I just realized now that I get to see the bike that we never change a steering stem nut. Oh, well, we didn't. No, we usually do that for these build bikes. Yes. We're going to use the TWM steering stem nut in black just because the bike has that carbon Hockenheim silver slash black team going. Yes. Our concern with the steering damper, if you want to come down in here and take a look. Yes. I cleaned it up just to figure out what it was, but if you look down here, there's a lot of oil in here. We first thought it might be the cleaner. That yes. You went crazy on Motul, but it's, it's some oily substance. In. So if you take a look, this is actually soaked. So this kind of confirms that it is the, the steering damper. damper. Yeah. It's made by Sox. It's a pretty good company, but I guess another thing that plagues these bikes are the dampers. You might want to check it out. I've never heard about it. Yeah. Leaking, but this bike does get ridden. But we'll change it to the old ones right now. That's awesome. Getting right into it, we're going to put the GP4 RX calipers on this bike. Yes. And it should be a direct replacement. You've watched Zach do this all <laughs> many times before. Yes. Just when we get questions about the calipers and what's the nickel plated ones and what, what they're not. So your V4R has the GP4 MS calipers, which is the newest caliper that came out. Okay. The only difference from this is that that's a one piece caliper. And calipers, the stiffer they are, the better they are. Um, so this is a two piece design. This was still their best, uh, this was still their best caliper that they've made. It was only a two piece design, but people get thrown off thinking monoblock is always better. Yes. But I guess due to the properties of the engineering behind this, this was their best street caliper that they made. Okay. And we're gonna be running these on the bikes, gonna match that it's beautiful. Underslung Brembo caliper down there. Yes, and as you realize now, the M1000RR comes with that brake setup. Yes, it does. So you saw it first on 650 Eve's channel. Yeah, and so does that beautiful fire blade behind us. Comes yeah. with an underslung unit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Aprilia's also come, if you take a look at your 1100 factory. Yes. They come with that, and your V4R, all the Ducatis are all underslung. Nice. Not that it makes a, it only makes a difference for the weights, where the weight is placed on the Ducatis, because mm -hmm. uh, the single-sided swing arms, obviously you don't have to mess with the caliper to remove it. I think Zach has already showed this. There's the dowel pins on these fork legs. We get this question a lot. When you get the racing calipers, they don't have the indent here so that, so that you could fit it onto the fork leg. Yeah. All we use is just get some of these extractor bits as you see, mm -hmm. and you stick them in the right size one. And then once you, start turning it as you see this loosens up and you try to pull it out as you're turning it and it'll come right out. Some of them are on there harder than the others, but trust me, it comes out. So this is that dowel pin that's in there for the caliper. 
in this game, all we got to do is remove this piece mm -hmm. and then we'll get to the upper one. So I knew this would happen once we start <laughs> taking stuff off. I'm yeah. going to keep finding stuff to change and put different stuff on. Yeah. And obviously our Proti titanium fully forged bolts for the calipers. Yes. We want to show you how much they weigh compared to the stock ones. So the stock ones weigh in at 89 grams. And the pro tie ones are 46 grams there per side. Go. That's beautiful. 47, let's say. Yeah. So almost half the weight. I know it's just, you know, <laughs> 50 grams or 40 grams or whatever it is. I can't do the math right now. Yeah. But every little bit counts. And look how it great does. they look. They just look amazing. They look totally amazing. And we amazing. put the Stalbus bleed valve. Yeah. The full six. Now that full six. Uh, cooling duct is amazing, Manny. It looks very nice. Yeah, look, it's, uh, I really like the contour around the fork right there. Yeah, me too. So well we're done. Poke well this done. all up, get it all bled, yeah. and then move on up and start fiddling around with the clip ons and master cylinders. So, guys, we we're not going to show you the left side of this bike. We we're just going to be like, magic has changed. <laughs> yes. But we came across something. Um, we usually don't like to point out negative stuff, but the calipers are leaking on the spike, and this has been a recall on the 2020 and 2021 S1000 WR with the Hayes calipers. Yes. I haven't seen one personally myself until I saw this bike, but if you see, I don't know if it comes out on the camera, this caliper is pretty shiny. It's not because it's all cleaned up, but it's because of all the, all the oil that's on it from the brake fluid, and you can see it. And when I actually took this bolt out, that bolt was also soaked. Yeah. And the leak is coming from the seals. There is a recall. There was a... Uh, they, they were first replacing the, the seals on the bikes. Unfortunately, some of the seals that were replaced were also leaking again. Yeah. And I think soon there's going to be a replacement caliper options for these bikes. I believe They're so. They're not going to be Brembo's, unfortunately. They're going to be the Nissan calipers. But at least uh, this is a major safety concern, unfortunately. Indeed. So uh, I urge everyone to check their bikes. You could, uh, sometimes it's bad enough that you really notice it here that there's a lot of brake fluid buildup. When you run your fingers, you'll get a lot of brake fluid. But in this case, it's just, I guess, been sweating, but it's getting all over the caliper. And luckily, we caught it in time. Absolutely. So the calipers are on. Yes. Next on the list is the master cylinder. We're going to be using the RCS-19. We were going to use a Corsa Corta to begin with. But as you guys know, uh, with COVID mm -hmm. and now the holidays in place, also Italy is shut down again. There's a little bit of a delay on the, cal on the master cylinders. Yeah. People ask. What's the difference between this and the Corsa Corta? It basically is the same internals. The only difference is that the Corsa Corta has an extra adjustment that no one uses. Mm -hmm. It looks a little nicer too, don't get me wrong. But this is the correct mass system to be running. The 19 means it's a 19 millimeter piston inside and it matches the pistons of the calipers on there. So we're gonna put this on and we also have the Olin steering damper uh, yes. for the 2020 S1000, 2021, same thing. Yep. And we're going to go back and use our trusted Rizoma Reservoirs oh, on I this bike. I love those. Yeah. Beautiful. Yep. So we got the stock damper out. You could actually hear it. Can you hear it? Yes, I do hear it. But if you take a look, it's been leaking quite bad. There was a lot of fluid out on the, under the, on that tray that we showed you. Yes. And this is on pretty much, you actually feel it too when you, when you're trying to pull and push this at some areas. But you see how, how wet this got right now? Yeah. I don't know if it comes up on camera, but either way, we're happy. Now we got our Olin's damper. Olin's. Olin's, I apologize. <laughs> but it's a pretty straightforward uh, install, to be honest, it's two bolts. Mm -hmm. And once you take that cover off that we showed you under here, uh, it just goes back on. Just, you just one thing you ought to do is, you want to make sure don't tighten this piece right away. Once you put it on the bike, make sure you could go fully left and right because that dictates how much this rod can go left to right. Okay. So this thing moves on here, left to right to put it on the bike. But it does come with an instruction manual. Yes. In case you want to read it. You got the little stylus bleed oh, yeah, valve, the master cylinder's on there. Oh, it's on there. What have you been doing while I've been gone? Wow. I want to get it done so we go riding. Heck yeah, man. I Beautiful can't ride day. in filthy, yeah, and I can't ride in filthy Cleveland, so. Perfect. Now we got to bleed the brakes and then go bed the brakes in. Yeah. One thing that's, I think, never talked about is also 
bedding the, uh, the pads in. Yes. When you get new pads onto the rotor, it's basically mating the pads to your rotors. So you want to have, I guess this is the simplest way to say it, you want to evenly coat your brake rotor with the new pad material, and that way uh, it, the, the brakes work the best. There's a big difference on a rotor that's properly bedded in with the pads and how much brake feel and also how much uh, um, more uh, that brake pad will grab on there. So that's one thing to do. There is Every pad manufacturer recommends a certain way of bedding them in. It's basically getting them hot and transferring that pad material over it. So you could just look it online. There's um, you know, all the different pad manufacturers that, I, as I said, have their own bedding in techniques for you to do. Yes. Um, so just look them up, and, but we'll do that on the road once we get out for the first ride to test the bike. Yes. We're using the Brembo HTC 64T racing brake fluid. I don't think we've shown this. Uh, for, for those guys who actually are car guys too, they might recognize this fluid. This is Brembo Racing's top of the line brake fluid. Okay. The difference with this brake fluid versus other brake fluids are obviously the boiling temperature is the highest out of anything that's out there. Also, it's the least compressible fluid, meaning that when you pull the brake lever, you're compressing that fluid and it's pushing the pistons. The least compression you have, the more direct brake feel you'll have. Eve actually has uh, felt the brakes on Walter Byers's. Yeah. Build series bike, and when yeah. we put this fluid and also change the calipers, it makes a world of difference. It does. And this is where our little stall bus bleeder valves are going to come in handy. I know Zach has a, uh, you know, machine, he has, a pump yeah, machine. he has he has a pump. So this is another way of doing it because, yeah, it's, it's nice to have the pump if you have it, but if you don't, and if you're track side, if you're if you're doing stuff on your garage and you don't want to buy a pump, this has a one-way check valve inside, and once you loosen it, just a quarter turn. And when you start pumping, you don't have to have two people because usually if you don't have Zach's machine, you have to pump it, hold it, tighten it, and then keep pumping and then open it while you're, you're pulling the uh, brake lever. Yes. This just eliminates that. So you just keep pumping through the fluid and the air will never go in because it's a one-way check valve. It lets flow going out, but nothing will go in. It also really, really helps with... Um, it really helps with the, uh, the the bleeding of it also that you try you get almost all the air out that that way i even run these on my car yes maybe he will show you my hockenheim uh silver m2. bmw m2 yeah. i actually have brembo calipers then we run these uh valves on it as well because on the car the, the brakes do get really hot especially if you use them on track yes and uh, over time the brake fluid do raise because of that and you want to uh, bleed it out get the air out of the system or uh put new fluid in so we can show the bleeder valves here as Nima is going to pump the brakes from up there as you see I'm not tightening this valve at all it's just pushing the fluid through and the fluid won't go back in because of the one-way check valve that's in the in these valves so yeah these uh, banjo bolts that we put in there are also the stylus banjo bolts with the stylus bleeder valves that are in there nice just makes it a lot easier as you can tell it's much later on in the day but yes. the bike is done <laughs> and I, I have a little surprise yes. we have a little surprise piece that showed up we have the new full six windscreen beautiful that is carbon and the smoke part this is also available in clear for those who don't like the smoke look mm -hmm. but the the main the biggest thing really we did today was the calipers and the whole massive cylinder setup Yes. So if we start up here, you have the 19 RCS master cylinder with the Rizoma Reservoir, the clear tubing that you saw earlier with these trick little bleeder valves. Yeah, bleeder valves. Yes. And also what we did was that we used the low drag levers on the Bremo master cylinder from TWM and have the matching clutch lever on this side. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, Absolutely. it makes the just when you have stuff matching and yeah. also the ergonomics of these levers are so nice that it makes a big difference. Yes. But if you go down there, yeah. you're going to see those beautiful GP4RX calipers with the Proti titanium blue bolts, the full six caliper cooling ducts. That's gorgeous. Yeah, again, it's uh, you see how nicely it tucks around the fork over there. Yes. And you also have the banjo bolt bleeders here from Stalbus. Yeah. The, the best part about this whole thing was I didn't have to mess around with the brake lines. The stock brake lines worked with those calipers, mm -hmm. which we're really happy. Also, we changed that damper. We get a yes. nice view from here. Of the, the Ulins. Yeah, the Ulins. Yeah. Damper that we replaced because the stock one was leaking. 
I see it. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Easy to adjust. You can get your hand to it. Very nice. Yeah, overall, we sacrificed the day of riding. Ah, uh, yes. But I think uh, <laughs> it really, well, you know, good thing that we saw that calipers were leaking that we replaced yes. was also the damper. You don't want that oil. Well, that tray was catching most of that oil from the damper, but yes. you don't want that going anywhere near the tires and everything. But yeah, that's, uh, I, we have a lot more stuff that we could put on there as well. <laughs> also, uh, we changed the steering nut. Yeah, yeah, you did. The new TWM beautiful. steering nuts. Yes, it's beautiful. Yeah, so it's, uh, I think it's looking, it was looking great, to be honest. You know, yeah. you can't say it wasn't a great looking bike to begin with, but. Yeah. But now it's even more phenomenal. Yeah, I think it's all the details have been touched upon. Yes, and it just comes together really nicely with the carbon fiber windscreen, the carbon fiber all over the bike, the full six front fender and everything else. The full six subframe that King David painted, absolutely amazing. I think all the paint job, that you, the touches that you guys did, it's makes it look outstanding with all the Hockenheim silver. Yes, and we can't forget the Rotobox bullet carbon fiber wheels for Pete's sake. Yeah. I mean, this thing is just so much carbon on it from the uh, swing arm covers to the frame covers. Amazing, the full six belly pan with the opening on the bottom. It's just great. And of course you got the arrow, full titanium exhaust. Can't forget that uh, rear caliper setup. Oh yeah, the Isn't first it? thing, the very first thing we did to this motorcycle. Now the calipers match. Nickel plated, Brembo calipers in the rear, and finally at the front now. Just amazing. But well, we can stand here and just ooh and ah over this bike all day, but we're gonna get out here and actually do some riding on these three machines. Let's go, Manny. Yes. All right, so I'm finally out and able to put some miles on this bike since we had the beautiful Brembo calipers, a master cylinder, the lean steering damper, and this amazing carbon fiber windscreen installed on this beast. And I'll tell you, the brake's absolutely exceptional now. They stop on a dime. They have a great feel to them. And this windscreen is just amazing. I really love looking down at the exposed raw carbon fiber. It just really looks nice. You can see it right there. Wow. And then you still have a nice double bubble tinted windscreen to go with it. It's just amazing. I know we've made it impossible darn there for a person to select the Aprilia, an RSV4 1100 factory over this amazing machine. The sound of the aero exhaust, the smooth throttle response with, with the most current Bren tuning ECU flash. This bike is absolutely exceptional. As I cruise on these beautiful streets near Miami, we got Miami Manny and his twin brother Nima riding the next season build bikes. That's also going to be a tough choice for a person to make with the Honda CBR 1000 Triple R Fireblade SP and our beautiful 2021 Kawasaki ZX-10R KRT Edition. Gorgeous bikes. But this one, it's amazing. I think Manny from Old Million just mentioned yesterday that this, in his opinion, is the best build series that we've done so far and I'd have to agree with him on that. The parts that we use for this bike is just top notch and we've used some world's first materials and oh this is really cool. It even has the cutouts up there for wind deflection to prevent head buffering. Super nice. Super nice. And so are my new key tags too. So if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you're already a subscriber, tap that bell and you'll get notified when new content is uploaded. We're starting the new year out right. Later on in the month, we're gonna have the random drawing for a person to select either this machine or our Aprilia, an RSV4 1100 factory. And then we'll get to work adding more parts to those amazing bikes. The Kawasaki has a Graves performance full titanium exhaust coming with the carbon fiber canister. That's gonna look amazing. We got carbon fiber wheels coming for both bikes. Lots of cool stuff that we're gonna do. All right, folks, we'll catch you next time on the 650 Eve YouTube channel.